Hi, I'm Roy Murphy. You're watching the BitConnect YouTube channel. Coming up in today's video, the BitConnect Soft Fork. Hello everyone, I'm Roy Murphy. Welcome back to the BitConnect YouTube channel. Today we'll be looking at the soft fork that occurred recently in the BitConnect coin. We'll be looking at the benefits and the implications to its users as soon as we do our reinvest. So let's do our daily reinvest. We've got just over $1,100. We'll do our reinvest as long as it's over 1,010. So we'll stick all in and we'll do a reinvest, which should be for 1100. Do a reinvest after 239 days and we'll confirm. There you go, it's 1100. And we'll check the time to enter in our calculator. It's two minutes to midnight and it's on the 13th of December. So let's get rid of this. So we are talking about the changes to the proof of work algorithm. So let me read this to you from the BitConnect website. As of block height 262,800 on the BCC blockchain, proof of work mining has ended. New coin generation as well as transaction verification on the blockchain will be handled by proof of stake. You will not be able to mine BitConnect coin with a CPU or GPU and only stakers will be rewarded. To learn more about staking and staking rewards, click here. So what does this mean? So this is what the soft fork has enabled or disabled, uh, depending on which way you look at it. BitConnect from its inception was always a proof of work and a proof of stake algorithm. Now, there's been some issues with some of the mining pools. When BitConnect first started, it only had its own mining pool and it did that to kick everything off to get the ball moving. It also offered out its, um, its mining algorithm to different nodes so that those nodes could be independently run and those independent nodes would monetize and maintain their own pools to secure the blockchain. So that's the whole point of having mining pools and miners. It's the part of the security of the system. Now, many of those third party pools have not been doing a very good job. Half the time they're down. I've had so many emails over the last four or five months saying we can't get a connection to this pool, that pool. It's nothing to do with BitConnect. It's to do with the setup of the pools and the type of pool software they're using. So that's one issue that will be resolved by not having a mining pool. Bearing in mind now that one of the other things that BitConnect has to do is to pay by the generation of the algorithm. So the difference now is that now there is only a proof of stake algorithm. So if we look at the historic algorithm that was there before, you can see the kickouts and now none of this has changed until there is a proof of stake algorithm change that will support the web staking that will be introduced hopefully by March of, of next year of 2018. These kickouts and these percentages as proof of work staking will actually stay the same. So nothing has actually changed. So the difference between a hard fork and a soft fork, a soft fork is a change in the algorithm and, and the way that the coin works that doesn't require any changes to any hardware or any nodes. The nodes that are already supporting BitConnect can actually stay the same because there's, there's no intrinsic issues with the coin itself because nothing has actually changed apart from the, the actual algorithm and the kickouts for the, uh, for the mining and for the staking. So if we look now and look at the history of BitConnect, so you can see here you've got the market cap dropped because of the change in algorithm and you can see steadily it's been going up and then going up and it's gone up again. Now this a lot of this is in preparation for the change at the block height where the proof of work algorithm was removed by the new proof of stake algorithm. So if we go over now to, uh, I wanted to explain a little bit more about why this is because I've had quite a few emails about this. Uh, if we go over now to the rich list, you can see that now in rich list number four is a new wallet. And this is one of the old hot wallets, which has been exchanged for one of the reserve wallets. So there's a, there's a zero amount here that has been moved to a different area, which has been moved to one of the hot wallets. So this is an old reserve wallet. And the total amount of 415,000 BitConnect coins has been moved into a different wallet to support and gain from the staking algorithm that has been changed. And there's a fair few of these from the 13th onwards. This is the 13th of December, if you're looking retrospectively in future videos. So 
This is one of the changes that occurred at block height 266878. So from here on in, a lot of these wallets have been moved around to different wallet areas to benefit from the new staking algorithm. So what this does in effect is actually bring these reserve wallets back into circulation. So the fact that it's back in circulation, this is why we get these big jumps. It's not that anything happened or anything dodgy's happened here or here. Uh, it's just a case of money that has been in reserve wallets either going out of uh, out of circulation or coming into circulation. So there's another nearly 5 million coins that could come into circulation. If you had all of those coins come into circulation, BitConnect wouldn't be number 16 at today's price. You would actually see that BitConnect would actually be above Ripple. It would actually be just on, between Ripple and Bitcoin Cash. It would be number four in the market cap. Now, there's a huge amount of reserves being held, and that new staking algorithm means that not only does BitConnect earn more money as a passive income, also so does its users. So if you think about it logically, now everything's gone over to the proof of stake. Now, this is to support the web-based staking. At the moment, staking in the QT wallet, you do not gain staking until your coins have matured for 15 days. Now, there's no point having a 15-day algorithm on a web staking wallet. So that algorithm had to change to be able to support the new web staking wallet that comes out within the BitConnect platform, hopefully by the first quarter of next year. So in order to do that, what they've had to do is provide a blanket fix to enable all of the money, all of the coin generation within the system between that and the 28 million coins that will ever exist. That is now fully entitled by the proof of stake algorithm. So that means now the only way that coins are created are by people actually either keeping a QT wallet open and running or the web-based staking, which comes out hopefully uh, first quarter of next year. So when that happens, those people are still securing the network like the miners did. Now the script algorithm is so lightweight, just merely having the QT wallet open, it's a partial node in a sense because it actually has a full version of the blockchain. It will download it, which is why lots of people have trouble syncing or it takes a long time to sync. It actually has to download those 300,000 blocks to form the blockchain within your own PC so that you are actually doing the verification every time a new block comes in. So when you are actually connected to blockchain, you actually are helping secure the system just like miners are, but you actually get rid of all that infrastructure. And because that proof of stake algorithm works for you as a stakeholder and for the biggest holder of the coin, which is BitConnect, there is a lot of money to be generated by changing this, both for the user and for the platform. So if we go through the numbers very, very quickly, I'm going to do this in my head now. So I think about this, there are blocks created every two minutes and there are 50 coins generated per block. So I believe that makes 36,000 coins generated per day. So at what's the price of BitConnect now? So if we go to the BitConnect uh, uh, over here, you can see it's now at 371. So 370 times 36,000, I believe that's about 4.8 billion. That is $4.8 billion in generation income that is now longer, part of that going towards the miners and the infrastructures that support them. That is now going back into the system. And there's also an amount that will be generated for its users. So if you look at the splits, about three and a half billion, that's billion with a B, three and a half billion of that will be going as value back into BitConnect's own holdings. And if we look again at the cryptocurrency, um, you, look at the, you look at the market cap for BitConnect, it's 1.7 billion. This will generate 4.8 billion in revenue next year. And you know that BitConnect owns currently in its own reserve wallets. This isn't even including the amount of BitConnect coins are being loaned back. These are the cold storage BitConnect coins. This represents three years worth at the same rate, at the same rate of growth. It will have in reserve holdings that will be generated for BitConnect over the next year. So that's a huge deal. That's a massive revenue stream, three and a half billion. And that's not also taking into account there's 1.3 billion that will be generated extra for its users. 
So how will that be distributed? Well, that isn't actually set in stone. But if you look at the changes they're doing to the algorithm, which was coming in March or by March of 2018, you can see that there are opportunities there to actually bring revenue, extra kickouts, extra percentage rates for its users. So this is a good thing. This is a win-win all round. So the other thing I wanted to cover today before I sign off is the Bitcoin volatility chart has been updated. Now I've been saying since October there is a 2% market cap on the daily kickout rates. Uh, it's a hard cap and they've now actually put the ceiling of 2% on this uh, on this chart now. So it used to go up to 3, 4, 5%. Now the ceiling is 2. It doesn't go above 2. If the BitConnect system earns more than the between, you know, it's a scaled rate between uh, 22 and 33% per day which is a logarithmic payout that you guys get so when people ask the question where do these figures come from all this uh, volatility trading this is a representation it's it's a small piece of the amount of money that the coin generates from trading per day so whatever it pays out here it doesn't matter what the rate is bitconnect will always earn more thus sustainability there's no point paying out more than you get because you'll end up with no money within X amount of years, which is no good for anybody. So um, so this is how these charts are enabled. And this will be in this format now until March 2018. If you remember the roadmap, these figures may change. There is a tweak um, because of all of this uh, institutional money coming into Bitcoin. There's a lot more volatility and the uh, there is now an AI bot that will be introduced there will be some proper business intelligence added to the script uh, to be able to be more responsive and more agile when uh, when making micro trades throughout the day the other thing that i've also noticed is that the bottom the you know the base which was always down here is now up here there is a representative 0 0.5 there is now a negative figure that BitConnect will be showing in its daily trades. Now, a lot of people are saying, does that mean that if it drops below this point here, does that mean that I'm gonna be losing money? I'm, I'm gonna be having a negative interest every day? No, that isn't the case. But the reason why this was changed is to show the consolidation from the previous day's trading. If the trade, if the trading bot actually makes a loss, you want to be able to see it represented here, and you want to be able to see the consolidation from the following day, to show that it needs to consolidate and actually make a gain before you can actually see a gain. So if there is a negative day, you still only, you can't get any less than a zero day. So worst case scenario, you won't get any uh, kick out for the following day. But it does show you the losses that it makes now. If it makes a loss, it will be shown on this chart and you will never be deducted anything from your, from your reserve wallet. So, you know, from, from your lending wallet balance, uh, or from your history, you will never see a, a negative figure in there. BitConnect will never take money away from you. Uh, but it does use this uh, figure here to show you if there is a negative day and how the bot actually recoups and consolidates to start off from a fresh year, uh, zero. Uh, so people don't get misinformed and misunderstand how this works. So um, it's just a way of clearing it up and making it more transparent for everybody. So uh, I hope that uh, I hope that helps answer a few questions and hopefully that will ease my inbox of any uh, of any queries so there you go more videos to come tomorrow i'm roy murphy you've been watching the bitconnect youtube channel and i'll see you in the next video this video was brought to you by team smurf we bring you new videos each and every day to join our team click the referral link below this video don't forget to like and subscribe and interact with us in the comments box below bitconnect creating wealth for everyone